This is a common LED 3D effect available from eBay. I'll start the video just showing you what it looks like and I'll show you the colour options. So the first colour is white, then red, then green, then blue, yellow, magenta, cyan, and then it goes to a very slow colour sweep. And if you touch the button again, it starts jumping through colours. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. Red, green, blue, yellow, magenta, cyan. And if you touch it again, it goes a very simple red, green, blue, and that's it. It's not going to do much else than red, green, blue. Touch it again, it goes back to white. OK, now you've seen it. Let's take it apart. So here's what you get. You have an option when you buy this. You can either buy it as just the base in its own, or you can buy it with a piece of pre-laser cut and laser etched art, is what I'd guess. And if you buy the base in its own, the base came in at about £4.50 each. Uh, but it's uh, quite a chunk more when you actually get the art with it. It comes with a remote control and it comes with a USB lead. And the remote control just offers the basic functions. It lets you choose colours. It lets you do intensities and it lets you choose the effects. It's just the classic little remote. Rather deviously, this one came with a little tab you pull out, but there was no battery in it. So you pulled the tab out and thought, I'm good to go. And it didn't because there was no battery. The bastards. But not to worry. Even if you remove, lose the remote, you still have the on-off button, which is a touch button. So if you press and hold the front of this, I should show you the button. There it is there. Press and hold it. After a while, it turns off. And then if you turn it on, you can cycle through... Uh, various effects going from white, uh, red. Well, you saw the effects earlier on that it goes through the uh, colours and then it does a few chasing effects. It does a few effects that you can get off this remote as well. There is also an option. Oh, this is something I should check. There's also an option for three AA cells. Let's plug it in and see if there is voltage present on those battery contacts because sometimes they just basically put a diode or something in from the USB and it means it can actually back charge the batteries which is not usually the best thing to do particularly if they're alkaline and they may explode let's put this here and this here yes I'm getting voltage there but we'll see if that's if that's like full on oh it looks like it's straight USB going straight in oh, okay current the current uh, draw I tested at white is 150 milliamps, red was 108 milliamps, green 76 and blue 72. That kind of suggests it may just be using one resistor in this for the whole lot. But we'll find out when we open it. I don't see any screws in here. I do see little foam pads. I don't think it clips together. I think there's probably screws under these. I shall just punch a screwdriver right through them, as I usually do. And this might not reveal anything. It's not revealed anything, has it? Oh, it's revealed uh, there is something in there. Uh, there's no screw under that one. Oh, I don't think there's a screw under this one either. This must just be clipped together. Yeah, it looks like it's clipped together. Let's spudge it and see what happens. Yeah, just clipped together. Circuit board's bigger than I expected. First things I'm seeing here, the circuit board does go over to the USB port. Uh, there's the infrared detector at the side receiver with its three connections, uh, plus volts, zero volts, and the data back. And there's just a little copper sticker that they often have just for the touch switch. I wondered if they were going to try and uh, have a separate circuit board for the touch switch, but obviously not, which is reasonable enough. I'm seeing what looks like a microcontroller there, but I'm also seeing a little... Uh, six pin chip here. Oh, that's the touch sensor separate. Okay, I shall put this Off I just ripped it right off the copper pad. I don't feel too bad about that Right. Well, you know the script. I'm going to uh, Reverse engineer this one moment, please The reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore the circuitry. It has the ubiquitous 8 pin chip a paduke could be anything generic microcontroller uh, that is powered from the USB supply and the batteries are directly connected across the USB supply. So if you put alkaline cells in, they would potentially explode if you left them in while you were running it from USB. If you put in rechargeable cells, the only thing limiting the current would be the USB cable. So it's, a not, it's not a great idea to do stuff like that. 
there is a capacitor across the USB supply and the, there's capacitors everywhere. Oh, you know what? I should just finish doodling that in because that's going to look nicer if I just fill this in. The orange here indicates the 3.3 volts because that is a 3.3 volt regulator. It has the incoming 5 volt supply. The 5 volt supply also goes then straight up to the LEDs and is common right along all the LEDs. But it goes to the regulator, gets converted down to 3.3 volts, and then it goes to this chip. It goes to the pass on, not pass on thread, the infrared receiver, and it also goes to the touch sensor chip. Other things worthy of note, uh, microcontroller runs three uh, transistors, just standard NPN transistors, which then switch the LEDs. The, the route they've taken for the uh, LEDs is interesting. The blue goes along to this end and then runs along here, dropping down to each of the blue connections because all the LEDs are in parallel. Green does the same from the front, and then the red is the middle pin. It zigzags backwards and forwards all the way along. Um, anything else worth mentioning? This little capacitor here, is used to fine-tune the touch sensitivity. I'll show you that in the schematic. Well, that didn't take long. Interesting things where they've noted the blue here, it's quite a convoluted track path it takes round. It actually forms a complete loop round here, which is a bit shady because uh, normally I'd want a separate uh, feed coming up purely for the switched uh, LEDs being switched by these transistors down to the negative because that means that all the noise from the pulse of modulation of these LEDs is going to be affecting the sensitivity and that's particularly important around about the touch sensor. It doesn't seem to cause any problems though. Let's bring in the schematic. And I shall zoom down in this. Not a lot to see, certainly not as much as the time spent trying to reverse engineer that because the tracks were quite hard to follow, particularly in this end of the circuit board because they're very, very fine. Taking the, bringing the power up to the, both these chips, the infrared and the uh, touch sensor, but also uh, taking the signals back from them. Okay, here is the USB and battery supply. There's its capacitor. It goes straight along to LEDs. It also goes to the 3.3 volt regulator, which has its own decoupling capacitor, which effectively is for the microcontroller. Uh, decoupling capacitor is the term we use in this part of the world. Uh, other countries seem to use a different name for that capacitor, but we call it a decoupling capacitor. The 3.3 volts goes to uh, feed the microcontroller. It has a spare pin that they've actually brought out a pad. Let me show you that. They've brought it out a pad just in case they thought of a use for it later. That's good thinking. That's the sort of stuff I do when I'm using microcontrollers like that, just leaving your options open. Um, so the other, uh, the microcontroller is fed by 3.3 volts. It also feeds the infrared receiver with its own decoupling capacitor. There's a one ohm resistor here. I think it's being used as a link though. I don't think it's really needed. The 3.3 volt also t uh, feeds the touch sensor, which has its own little decoupling capacitor locally for stability. And it then has the touch plate with that capacitor, which can be 0 to 50 picofarad, depending on how sensitive you want it. That's if you have too much, uh, it, if it's picking up rogue touch senses, you can actually increase the value of that capacitor. It just tames it down a bit, filters the noise. This little chip, I worked it out, out what it was. It's a TTP223, although it was marked 33DE11, but the pinout matches this. Uh, things worthy of note about that, it has a low current mode where when it's not sensing a touch, it will go down to about 1.5 microamps. When it thinks it's detected a touch, and that could just be interference, it steps the current up and, and uh, goes more active to the touch sensor just to see if it was a touch uh, and to register it. And when it does, it sends a signal back. There's two spare pins in that. One of them is used. You can see the orange here is the 3.3 volts. The three pins that I the middle one is the positive but the ones either side can be taken positive to set modes. This one is floating, which means it goes by default down to the zero volt rail. If this one had been uh, taken positive, it would have gone into toggle on, toggle off mode, which wasn't needed for this. The other one just determines the polarity of the output. They, it didn't really matter there because the microcontroller can deal with any polarity. Um... The output of the microcontroller then drives... The LEDs are all in parallel. Uh, each of the three channels, red, green, blue, has a 680 ohm resistor uh, feeding the base of a J3Y or S8050 transistor. 
and then it switches LEDs. It turns out there's a resistor per LED color, 22 ohms. So my low readings earlier on may have just been down to the resistance of the cable actually affecting that because it seemed to seem to be sort of restricting the current and the five volts by the time it gets there under a relatively heavy load of the LEDs, that is going to affect, add, add some resistance. But the LEDs, the group of 10 in parallel, 22 ohm resistor, switched by the transistor, and that's multiplied by three times. It's very straightforward. It really is just sort of little textbook modules, so to speak. The logic supply feeding the touch sensor, the infrared and the microcontroller, and then the 5 volt supply just going straight and feeding the LEDs. That's it. 50-50 packages here. Uh, basically speaking, a red, green, blue chip each with a... Uh, Six pins, red, green, blue, and then the positive, 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 the other side. Um, or alternatively, you can each LED effectively has two pins. But that is it. The infrared sensor, it's worth mentioning, it just it demodulates and decodes the, the signal. So it puts a, a stream of logic pulses depending on what the uh, remote control transmitter is transmitting. Um, and that is it. It's a fairly textbook design. It seems reasonably well made. Uh, so that's reasonable enough. Um, useful for your own projects if you have a laser cutter for cutting the acrylic and then potentially uh, engraving the surface to actually catch the light and make it light up. Not a bad little device.